is, according to the world, 707. We have a quorum with four out of either five or six. Um, so I will call the meeting to order at 707. Um, and I say we either have five or six because I don't remember if we need to get a formal notification from the select board that Megan is on the, but I, I was at the meeting when they, they voted to appoint her. Oh yeah. So yeah. I, I think that's official enough to say that we sure. have, we have six members. I, it was in the newspaper. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. good. So. Megan had a conflict tonight, I believe. She's not feeling well. Oh, oh, that's right. She has a she has a bone. Yeah. Um, and I'm thinking that Wayne uh, knew last month that he had a conflict. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. So I think you remember. Um, so moving along to agenda item number one, welcome and call to order. We kind of did that before we before we open the meeting. Um, clerk's report from Pat would be item two, and that would be the minutes. Everyone has a copy, right? Yep. Sarah, you have a copy also? Yep. The only thing I saw here was under number two, the paragraph that starts the group discussed. Mm -hmm. The second to the end line, I think it's well regarded. Am I right? Yes, you're right. And I think well regarded might have a dash. Well, I think dashed. you're right. And thank you. I, I did not find any inaccuracies in terms of content. <laughs> okay. Nor would we expect with Pat. The... Um, then if there's no discussion otherwise to the content, uh, do I hear a motion to accept the minutes from our December meeting? I, you would move? I move to accept okay. the minutes as amended. And do we have a second? I'll second. Second, Sarah. All right. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Yes. We need unanimous, so we do not need a roll call vote. Um, thank you again, Pat, for your studious uh, attention to mm -hmm. Max. Um, item three, so business. Item A, continued, dis continued discussion on local preference the Econo Lodge have. So, yeah, so we started that discussion, um, but we did not complete it. And that would probably be in the, that would be item 2A from the mm -hmm. minutes, which, uh, was the bulk of the yes of the minutes we did, we did cover a lot. Yep. Anyone have uh, particular items that they wanted to continue to investigate or discuss or ask uh, ask investigatory questions about? I guess my main question would be to know if and when is there a date by which we should send a letter or whatever comment we want to make and to whom. I actually poked around on the town website. I think it's the zoning board it says here is the next step in that whole process to whom we could express our support for the project and for little or no local preference if that's what we decide. Um, but I can't find anything about an actual date when they meet. It just says quarterly, but there's no. Right. right. Yeah. I can answer. The, the ZBA does not have structured. They meet as needed. Um, and in general, they say quarterly. So when I went before them uh, a year or so ago, 
or a variance, um, they just kind of, when they get one or two, then they kind of okay. uh, say, is anybody else got something cooking? Cause we're gonna schedule a meeting. And so they kind of, if they hear things are, are coming, then they kind of, how soon are you gonna have it? They wait, if they see that something's coming soon and it it's, shouldn't wait till the next quarter, then they schedule. So it's kind of an organic, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, so we should check with, um, I want to say Didi, but it might not be. I think Didi um, in the in the inspection office um, might assist with their scheduling. Um, uh, Mr. Bombardier is the chair, I believe. Um, uh, Attorney Bombardier and I. Have, I have an email for him somewhere. Um, so uh, if anybody wanted to, uh, that might be a way to pursue that would be to email Dee Dee and if she has a quick answer and then we're set, or if not, she might say, reach out to uh, the chair. Yeah. yeah. So it could happen quickly after they decide to meet or it could happen in a couple of weeks or a month or i think i think once they decide then then they have to do at least a two week notification okay um because also uh, anyone who's you know it's kind of a public hearing so people have right. to have to send notifications to butters like if, right. if they're doing something that impacts the, you know, mm -hmm. for example, when I was going for a variance, um, I had to get a list of all the butters within so, so many hundred feet mm -hmm. and um, send them notice of my issue and the date that the meeting would be held and if they were going to have a Zoom link, what the Zoom link was. Mm -hmm. So I would say... You know, that's two weeks and probably a week before it. So it's probably going to be three weeks notice once they know when they want to get the date. You know, they'll, they'll, I think they'll plan it out at least three weeks ahead. Um, so mm -hmm. we can send an email to, uh, okay. Maybe. So it wouldn't hurt for us as individual Hadley residents to start jotting down the ideas that we would want to have in such a letter. And then if we wanted to do something as a committee to also think about how we would have that ready in time. Laura Baker would probably also know because she would be the one requesting the CBA, so mm -hmm. they would be they would be letting her know, right? When, when they're meeting, right? You know, they would right. they would probably tell her what I was told was that you know we'll let you know as soon as we get close to scheduling, mm -hmm. um, right? That would be. I would I would offer to do it, Mark. I'm just not sure it's really my role. No, I can, the chair. I think no. maybe it would be your yeah. role to yeah. ask. I know all three of those people, or at least I I've had dealings mm -hmm. with them, so I'm fine. Great. And besides, Pat's priority is writing the thing for the town book for the spring meeting, spring yeah, town report. meeting. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I, in response to your um, suggestion, Sarah, I would agree yeah. it would be good for us to start to jot down our own ideas yeah. about local preference. I mean, mm -hmm. I've spent a lot of time thinking about this and reading about it. And, um, you know, I, I haven't really landed on an exact place, but I think there's a lot to think about. Mm -hmm. um, 
with regard to this. And I do appreciate um, Laura's suggestion that we can have individual opinions and that's good, but as a group, we may want to write a joint letter. I, right. I think that's a tall order, um, <laughs> but I think it it is um, tied to our committee responsibility. So I think if we could spend some time talking about our individual perspectives and then see if we can land on a, a joint statement, I think that would be good. Yeah, cool. Um, I see two ways to go forward. One is that we could all draft up our, our own thoughts and put together um, our own, and then we could combine them and boil it down to, to, to one at our next meeting. Um, or we could create a subcommittee that can continue to work on this between public meetings. So if, um, let's say, you know, two of us wanted to uh, compile everyone's thoughts and, and create a draft letter to be reviewed at the next meeting, that would put it to, that might be the most productive way because then everything's there and we can cut things out, we can reword things instead of trying to merge everything then. Right. Um, I don't know if we have, um, Wayne might be interested in that. Mm -hmm. um, might be something if he's laid up. Uh, be something he, I know he likes to wordsmith. He's good at it. Yeah. I know I don't have the bandwidth, but I have the interest, just not the... The, the bandwidth to meet or to write? To be on the subcommittee and to be writing that, yeah. Um, Do we want to, us four, just bat that around a few of our thoughts? I mean, I've been... We can do it now in the public you know, meeting, but if you want to work outside of the open meeting log, then we'd have to have a subcommittee, which would be less than a quorum so right. that they can legally meet and work on it. Right. So that would, that's why I said two people, because I think yeah. three, three yeah. would be, right. uh, well, if, if we're now six, then three is, you could have three. That's not, a quorum is now, uh, is now four right. with Megan as our sixth member. So. So you could have three people work on it legally um, mm -hmm. between now and next month. And and I'm just, I'm, I'm, I guess what I haven't stated and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking is that time may be of the essence because if they could schedule it in three weeks, we might want to be ready to pull that trigger. Right, um, exactly. Right. And I don't remember if Laura said, they want to get through ZBA, and if I don't remember if they have to go to town meeting for anything, or if that's not a town meeting issue. I think maybe it's not. I think not. I don't knows. think it requires. The only Board of Appeals makes a decision. Yeah. Um, so on local things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I'm interested in hearing what you, your thoughts, Pat. I mean, I, I've been mulling it around. Do you want to just take a few minutes yeah, and yeah. see what we're thinking? Well, I'll, I'll go back to something Mark said early on, which is the whole idea of, of local is something that we have come to embrace, right? Shop locally, be focused locally. And so it's... Um, it's something that many of us have incorporated into our value system and our lifestyle. Lifestyle. So the mm -hmm. whole idea of mm -hmm. local preference could, in fact, fit in that in that um, mm -hmm. like category. Um, and then I think the three conditions under which people would be considered for local preference also make sense to me. Um, you know, people with school choice, for example, people who work in town, you know, people who work at the mall, I'm very persuaded by that argument. Um, and then resident. Um, but, but I also, on the other hand, feel that local preference 
Um, probably in reality serves as a, um, a barrier to other people having the opportunity to have this housing. And I probably spent way too much time thinking about this, but I've thought about it a lot. And I, and I reflected on one of our early conversations as a committee, and I meant to pull up the graphic, but remember the graphic that we had of um, individuals watching a baseball game and there was a fence. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and so um, there, there was an individual who was shorter than the fence and couldn't see over the fence. And that was the first frame. And then the second frame was to um, give that individual and also a taller individual who could see well over the fence um, platforms. Mm -hmm. So the taller individual was still taller, but the shorter person could actually see over the fence. And then the third frame, I think, was remove the fence altogether. Yeah. So I began to think about that framework with regard to local preference, mm -hmm. that, that there are individuals who are living within the area in which they're eligible for this very attractive, affordable housing. And local preference would reduce the number of units that those individuals um, would have access to. And maybe those individuals would like to exercise school choice but they can't possibly make it work by living where they live. They may love to work at the mall, but they can't do it because they have no vehicle. And so, mm. you know, and um, I mean, living in town isn't one of those things, but those other two things that are very attractive to me, individuals may want those things, but they can't do it without housing. So housing is almost like if you use Maslow's hierarchy, like a basic, um, condition mm. under which people can send their children to the very good Hadley schools, can actually get a job in town. And so I began to think that a high local preference, and I even did, you know, it's not very sophisticated math, but if you take the 50 units, because I think the 51st um, unit is for the manager, I think. Mm, yeah. I think so. so you take 50 units and 70% local preference is 35 units. And so 15 units are left for the rest of the people. So anyway, that's where I've sort of landed that even though I, I totally embrace the whole idea and I think of people who work at the mall for whom this would be just wonderful, but I also think of people who don't even get to work at the mall because they can't get here. So, right. so right. I mm -hmm. guess I've landed on the fact in my heart that um, a, a, a small percentage of local preference, if any local preference is my preference. If I look at it through the lens of diversity, equity, and inclusion, which is the lens I'm looking at it from here, I'm not looking at it from, you know, my own relative who might like to live in local or, or you know, a friend of mine whose child goes to Hadley High School. I'm looking at it strictly from this committee, and I guess I've landed on the on the place that, um, you know, a low percentage of local preference would be my preference. That's pretty much exactly how I feel. Yeah. Same. Any thoughts from Yeah, that was that that's that's how I've molded around and and, and uh, um as I recall, these units are pretty much for single people. So Most I think them, I local think. preference isn't, you're not going to see much in terms of their child's in the school. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you, what you said just kind of turned my light bulb on, which is if they are working in the air and they're already getting here, I'm not saying they might not want to be closer, mm -hmm. but my understanding is this is, I mean, the, what are the numbers? $19,800 a year. These, these are people that need a place to live. Right. Not necessarily a place to move from the place they already have to live. Right. So I, I and when you said that about you know removing the wall altogether, it it seems that local preference begins to feel like a privilege. Right. And, and it, it, now that's not to say that the zoning board or town meeting might 
not agree, but if we start by saying no preference, then it, it might end up not being 70. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. I, I came thinking low and now I kind of feel zero. I have an employee who's looking for housing, but she works for me. I know she makes more than this. Right. So, and that, and she's not the demographic of, she just needs a place to live. This is, this is for, for a, a different group. So yeah, that I kind of landed right in the, the same kind of place. Right. What do you think, Mark? Well, I try to walk all the way around it. And I'm thinking, all right, so who does local preference appeal to? And we certainly hear, at least I certainly hear on the planning board, um, complaints that real estate has gotten so expensive mm -hmm. in town mm -hmm. that people who want to downsize and age in place in their hometown of Hadley can't afford to. Mm -hmm. um, so I would not want to exclude those. Um, and if my understanding is correct, let's say we gave, um, let's say we proposed uh, uh, 20 or 30% local mm -hmm. um, preference. And then if, if I understand correctly, basically the first, and that would be, say, or so, let's say 20%, that mm -hmm. would be 10 units. 10, Ten units. units right. So then mm -hmm. before they go to the lottery, they would consider the applicants that, uh, that fit that local preference, live here, school here, work here. Mm -hmm either or 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 um and and i would not want to exclude them so i, I don't think i would say zero because that you know that that would be a bummer if you're here and you want to stay here and you can't afford to stay here and you've got a bad lottery number so um but at the same time i don't know that you need to go 70 percent because i don't think that there's 35 i don't know i don't know but um, and maybe the new housing production plan has some demographics that would cover that. But um, <clears throat> yeah. so unscientifically, I'm just kind of my gut is to say I would support something in the 20 to 30 percent, because my understanding is that you don't then. If you don't get local uh, if you don't get applications which comply with that, then everything's open to the lottery. Right. It's just right. they get the first, you know, the, right. the the choice of first refusal, right? And then that's that's what I'm thinking, right? If, if I remember what Laura said, mm -hmm. my recollection also, yeah. So I'm I'm thinking, you know, if it were something thirty, twenty five, something like that, that. Yeah. That should be enough to secure. Um, and then if, if you know, there may be people who said, yeah, I, you know, I would have wanted to apply, but I'm not ready. I, I would be re ready in three or four years. You know, we can't, you know, that's, we can't control that when, when these projects come along. But if we, you know, I would feel more comfortable defending the chance. We did save a certain amount. Sorry, you weren't ready. To downsize and sell your, you know, sell your house and move in yet. Hopefully, the next project, if there is another one, you know. So, yeah, I. And there will be. And, and I don't remember. Did we ask if that? Let's say it's thirty <clears> percent. <throat> when there is turnover, which I think she said, there's not often a lot of turnover. But if let's say it all gets filled and no one locally applies, so now you're a hundred percent hadn't been mm -hmm. local if someone in five years becomes available they have to wait until one opens and they would maybe get first i don't know if that local preference no, can, I don't, carries no i don't think it carries forward i don't think it carries i think she said it doesn't carry forward 
Really? I okay. We asked that. Okay. Yeah. And I think, Mark, you're you're raising something I don't know anything about, but I think it's important, and that is the the needs of people in Hadley. And yeah. I know that that um, people have talked about affordable housing with the capital A, capital, capital H versus affordable housing. And and what you were saying in to me sounds like the small A. Small right. That's what I think they want, but would they feel slighted if we didn't give them yeah. the opportunity at the capital aid? Because right, they might this might not be what they want. They want a standalone house that's affordable. Well, yeah, yeah, we is, we can't right. do that and, magic. And they may not have the income requirements either. I mean, I think that's the other thing about Hadley. And and as a senior, I sort of feel the same way. You know, people who have big houses may not want those big houses, but we like Hadley and we'd like to have a, a smaller property. And there aren't a lot of um, you know, ranch style, small property places. And that, that's a whole nother that's, conversation, yeah, I think. That is isn't a, this. No, this is 12 one bedroom apartments. Yeah. And thirty nine studio apartments, which yeah. is one room with with a kitchen in it. Right. These are right. tiny, tiny. Yeah. 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 These are to me. If if there was local preference, it would seem that someone's already living in Hadley. This is downsizing. For most people, it would be yeah. The only but, people for whom it would be a step up would be people who are currently completely houseless or maybe are renting a room in a house and would like their own place. Right, and work in Hadley. And work in Hadley or, they yeah. They have to be making very low income. Right, right. Yeah, I can think of one or two of my tenants, for instance, who might be interested in, might have been interested in something like this in years past, if it was something that they were around for now. It could be someone's young person who's living at home. Right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. An adult child living at home who would like to have their own place. Yeah. A separate place. Yeah. And, and, and I think that what that scenario I was talking about is probably is probably a better candidate for something like what uh, Barry Roberts brought forward, but in a, in a right. different zone, which was el elderly housing. You know, right. So it's, it's, it's discounted for over 55 um, but yeah. that may still be too, you know, because the ones that he did, they were still not, uh, you know, he, when you're going to build elderly housing, they let you build them more densely, but those were still not affordable by many people's standards no, no, from no. what I've heard. Those were, so, so if that's the little A, there's got to be somewhere between that and the, I don't know, well, and that's a conversation, I think, for yeah. another day, but it's yeah. an important conversation yeah. in the right. town. Right. You know, as I think about it, I keep going, wait a minute, this this is a step in the right direction. This is not intended to solve everything. No. <laughs> right. I keep reminding right. myself right. that this, this is helping people to get a leg up. Right. You know, because they've got all these other services, too. They're... <laughs> they're they're uh, preparing for people who may have some, you know, some issues and they'll have people there to, to help them. Right. It's great. I wonder if we could create a little survey and sheet and hand it out at town meeting. You know, do you foresee an, an interest in downsizing and staying in Hadley in the next five, 10, 15 years? What would you be looking for? What you know? How many bedrooms? What are you looking for? I think the housing that, survey did that. Survey. It should have. Yeah. 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 The results are in. Yeah. I think okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I have to read that. <laughs> well, you should find out. Yeah. You. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Here I am thinking about how I don't have a specific awareness of all the different needs of the actual real live residents. Yeah. And I have a big house, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, not not a McMansion. No, no. I I largely in a ranch house. Yeah. <clears throat> I just added but the up. area we go jogging, you know, that whole area yeah, where I live. Yeah. That that's a whole area when they developed that. Lots of nice little starter houses. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, we just added on to our, our cape so that uh, we could age in place there. Mm -hmm. All right. So what are we seeing here? Are we seeing a, like a, a, a little local preference or what is um, <laughs> as a group? Uh, we should ask yeah. Wayne his thoughts too. Wayne yeah. wanted no local preference, if I recall. Yeah. Yeah. And Megan would have it. Mm. Yeah. So we're somewhere from zero to 30. Mm. Is that does that sound about right? Yeah. yeah. So 30 is so, so okay. So there's and I might just you know, and I I would probably, you know, considering what we talked about. The little A and the big A and so, somewhere in between. Uh, I, I would I would even amend myself down to twenty percent. Okay. You know, yeah, sure. And keeping in mind that if people don't meet the qualifications, as I understand, those twenty percent still go into the lottery. It's just yep. giving yeah. just giving a first chance. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't local. guarantee that twenty percent are going to definitely go to local people. And that's ten yeah. units, just so we know. Yeah, that's only 10, yeah. Units. That's yeah. ten units. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I'd be delighted with zero local preference, but I have a feeling that there will be people in town who would like there to be local preference, and I'm comfortable going to twenty or thirty percent. I just would prefer that we don't go to seventy percent. Um, yeah. And like she said, they, they would still need to qualify, but the idea right. that they could apply mm -hmm. seems sure. seems equitable. That's right. Yep. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which okay. is one of our charges, right? Yeah. Of our committee. Yeah. Equity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I gave a lot of thought to you know how yeah. this is saying yeah. how again, we already how when when most people in a community are people who look like us right. and it's local, it's more people, but yet people who look like us, we all have differences. Mm -hmm. And so, sure. you know, yeah. diversity, equity, yeah. inclusion is, is more than just racial, but right. there is this group that have been so really big. You know, marginalized in a way, not like us. Yeah. I kind of like that preference a, a little <laughs> or a lot. <clears throat> so we're okay. we're coalescing around a zero to twenty. Yes. Yeah. I think yeah. that's our, and, and Wayne might say zero, so that would make it yeah. ten. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no wait, it can't be a half, right? Ten percent of no. 50. I tried. I tried a twenty-five, and it just ends up like twelve. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it has to be whole numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Five. Ten percent is five units. Yeah. It has so, to be an even number. It has to be an even number, right? Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> But I appreciated you going back to the original like slides and, and reminding us what these units actually are. Yes. I, you said 39 studios and yeah, this is I printed it out because I said I'm gonna have to have this with me. Um oh this is interesting. 54% of Hadley ranchers are cost per that, that's 30% yeah. of income. Okay, so back to where what I'm fifty four percent or what? Yeah. Cost burdened, meaning they're spending more than a third of their income on their housing. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. So where did I just have that? Oh my goodness! You printed out the whole. Yeah. Good for you. I did too. It's sitting in the printer. And I printed on the back side <laughs> of paper, paper so that I'm okay. yeah. good. So it, it says it's going to create uh, twelve one-bedroom apartments. Mm -hmm. And then 39 studio apartments, mm -hmm. they're being converted by adding some kitchens to that. Mm -hmm. My daughter has a studio, so I know what they look like. It's, it's one room. Well, the bathroom is always yeah. separate, but the, the whole room is everything. I lived in a studio in D.C. for a semester. Mm -hmm. And it's going to add solar panels on the top. That's kind of And how, the rest are two bedroom. So is that? No, there's no, no, the, no bedroom. No, the rest studio. Twelve or one bedroom. Okay. And thirty-nine are studio. Okay. Which I would imagine includes the mm -hmm. living manager one. Right. Would yeah. be a studio probably. Mm. All right. Yeah, they're very small. Probably. 
Yeah. They're basically a hotel room, but instead of having two giant beds, they just have one little bed. So there's room for a table and chairs and your dresser and your oh, little um, kitchen. Let's throw this in there because I had not really noticed this. Um, it's designed primarily to house single adults with some two-person households, but it says 25 apartments are for very low-income tenants, mm -hmm. including preference for unhoused persons. Right. Pay 30% of their income towards rent. So that's half of them. Right. The other half are apartments for moderate income tenants. 60% AMI, does that mean 60% of Yeah, uh, your income? area mean income. Okay, who pay below market rent. So actually I had I had thinking they were all for this really low. So this moderate, mm -hmm. I think that's where, you know, there's some applicants could be mm -hmm. more local applicants. Mm -hmm. right. um, yeah. Interesting. Okay. So then they get, okay. Income tech caps. So for the 30% of their income towards rent, the person would be one, a single person would be 19,800 per year, 60% 39,540. They're saying the 30% one, this is suitable for retirees, part-time workers, and persons with disabilities. And the 60% is suitable for full-time low-wage workers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hadn't remembered this. <laughs> There's a lot here, I you know. Yeah. It's good that we have that to refer to because there is right. so much information to absorb. Right, because right. So the yeah, so if you're a retiree, you're on a fixed income. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're disabled. Right. You know, have right. part time work. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Any other discussion on that? I don't want to close it prematurely if we're still digesting. What's well, the next step? What yeah. if each of us wrote a paragraph or two? Mm -hmm. Homework. How about that? This one just just fit it in like a very succinct. Um, I support X for the following reasons or whatever, and then we could try to put it in one document. Right. Merge overlapping. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Right. So we'll, we'll, I mean, right. just to have something that we can work from, I think trying to get together might be unrealistic. Right. And maybe try to do it in the next three weeks before the, like the week before the meeting, the Thursday before we meet. Yeah. And and you could send it to me or we can send it to each other, whatever we want. That, how does that sound? Um, we could submit them to you. That would certainly be safe okay. in terms of open meeting law. Yep. Okay. okay. Not that necessarily decisions are being made, but if we are all showing each other's, mm -hmm. it may sway our... Right. <clears throat> you can, yeah, you can read them and kind of... You know, um, do a little you, preliminary. I mean, I can, yeah, that I think that would be okay, right? Great. That's, yeah. All right. And so if our next meeting is, is it the 16th? February 16th would be February 9th. So by February 9th, we could also then Megan and, and Wayne could. Yeah, you let them know. I, yes. Okay. Right. Said you. And if you're a townsperson out there <laughs> watching this uh, from the Hadley uh, media website, uh, we would welcome you to submit. Definitely. That would be to <laughs> patricia.rissmeyer at gmail.com. R I S S M E Y E R. Which should be on the website. It's where the agenda is. So if okay. you go to this agenda, agenda, my email address is on, right. on the agenda.
Yeah. Uh, when did you say the next meeting was? The, the next meeting is the 16th of February. That's what I thought. Great. Okay. Good. Wayne must be rubbing off on me. Let's have something specific. <laughs> Even if it's just a date. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's our next step. Yeah. Um, then if we're ready, we can move on to item 3B, which is the discussion of the town of Hadley Code of Conduct. What, what are we what are we discussing? Because I remember discussing this before. I don't know. Any concerns, any recommendations we might want to offer to either the town administrator or HR? Um, things or maybe the town administrator, because if, if she vetted it and would present it to the select board. Uh, I don't know what their process is, but if we had anything that um, we felt was mi missing or we would prefer to see something clarified or changed, I'm guessing that's what our thought was. Well, there's a typo in it, but that's kind of things I catch, but... Um. Yeah, this is probably from a form, isn't it? This came from that that organization it's, it's, statewide. It is. Um, it's very similar, maybe identical to the Massachusetts Interlock Insurance Association Risk Management Group. Okay. Mm -hmm. On the last page under enforcement, where the third bullet is, it's right in the middle of a sentence. That just seems like it's not supposed to be at that spot. So it mm -hmm. says or individual. Looks like it's supposed to say the firm or individual. Okay. Right. You know, I mean, I know stuff like that. Yeah. And I just not the document is okay. I just they make a mention of the town's anti-harassment, anti-discrimination policy, which is not something I could find. Did we no? Did, did we ever succeed in this? I don't know. If, I don't know if we made a decision to act on that, but I was curious to see that. You know, anti discrimination has something to do with what we do, I think. So. Mm -hmm. Well, and this isn't on, I couldn't find this on the town website either. Um, I found it, it actually led me to minutes in 2018 at which this was discussed. Um, but there is no, it did not lead me to the actual policy. So I don't know if, if it was intended to be on the website, but I, I would suggest that the policy should be on the website. So maybe this is part of our work is to recommend rec some communication to whoever it was. Who's, the town administrator. Yeah. So I'm putting, to, putting another action yeah, item for myself to, to email the town administrator and ask if we can get a copy of the town anti-discrimination. Right, but policy. more importantly, if these have been approved, they should be publicly available on the website. That's my, I'm putting forward as a. <laughs> right. right. I, I, I would ask, yeah. So I'm thinking that I, I will request a copy and say, or we have not been able to find it after mm -hmm. tiring efforts to, uh, <laughs> you know, so it's not. Clearly, um, it could be there somewhere, right. but you have to yeah. ask someone. Oh, that's in this yeah that, folder, or that, you know, it wasn't so, searchable. Right, right, right. And so, if I will ask her if we can get a copy of it, and if it would be all right to either put a link or put it on our page, because that might be a logical place for someone to go looking. For it. Mm -hmm. Right. So right. if it's supposed to be public, would they have a problem with it mm -hmm. being either linked or on our our page? Right. And I would just 
edit that to ask, are those two documents formally approved by whoever, whoever, who is the who, who says this has now been endorsed by? The is two the, documents, do you the mean? Two, two, both. Well, this one, because it on mentions down. this, then it has to be inclusive right. of that. Right. So I just don't know if this is a draft. I believe she said this was approved pretty quickly okay. by the uh, um, by the select board, okay. but I, I will ask to confirm that. Right. Then I just think it should be easy, publicly easy to find for any public servant and any resident of the town. Or anybody, but you got that already. Right. You, you, when this is you know known, then things like what brought this up come up. Now action can be taken. This, this was not proper code of conduct, so we can. But I right. think it needs to be yeah. really out there. Right. <laughs> That's my view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I'm sure there will be pushback, and the word "woke" will be thrown <laughs> in our direction. But that is, we are following our mission. Yep. So that's all I have to say on that topic. Right. Okay. Okay. There and any other comments from you or or Pat? Anything else? Any concerns about the code of conduct? No, nothing that hasn't already been covered. No, just appreciate very much that that the town administrator, you know, yeah. had it written and yeah. approved and yeah. advancing a code of conduct. Yeah. That was yeah. From municipal government, that was a rifle shot. Yeah. They, obviously, they obviously felt it was the right thing to do. And, mm -hmm. and I would venture to say that this might just be a starting block. This might be, you know, mm -hmm. they went and they found a model base unit. And um, it might be something that we want to revisit, you know, every six to 12 months and just because maybe something else has come to mind from um, yeah. things we've read about or we've personally experienced mm -hmm. or heard about, we might want to say, oh, you know what? Let's uh, see if the town would want to add this. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Uh, Anything else on code of conduct <clears throat> discussion? If not, I will move us on to agenda item four, new business, and the overview of the work of local DI committees. I move to table that item until Megan can join us. I oh, think okay. That, I think that's MR is her, isn't That's right. That is. Oh, yeah, I want to hear about that. All yeah. right. Now would we'll bring us to five open agenda. Do we have anything more to say about the report for the annual publication? That that is. Do we have anything more to say about that? No. Um, I just have a question because Sarah had some great notes, which I did read, and I do have a copy. I made a copy, Sarah. Okay. Um, there were some things that Sarah recognized had not um, been recognized, but they happened in 2021, right? Okay. And so I I think, is this report supposed to cover only 2022? Um, probably. We could maybe try to put a little paragraph about um, items from 2021 that we missed last year's annual, just to... Sure. Yeah. Try it. Yes. Okay. And see, if it, it in. see if that gets clipped out or not. Okay. It's a you can always say being a new committee committee, we didn't get yeah. items in. But yeah, however you want to work right. that. Okay. If they don't want that, they'll cut it out. Yeah, there could, there could be a little like last paragraph. Having having missed the deadline for last year's annual report, mm -hmm. we would just offer 
you know, uh, the following uh, acknowledgement of activities that happened in the, in the fire department. And Pat, did you want me to keep going through my notes and, and sure. make any more comments? Awesome. That, okay, yeah. cool, I will. I got a couple of more months done the other day, but I'll finish. Be great. Yeah. Looks like Margaret, they used to be. Yeah. Margaret's in the, she's in the health. She's a board. I was going to say, that even with the mask health. on. Yes, yeah, like, that, 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 yeah. yeah, okay. Right. right. That's why she did. Nice. Yeah. Let's try to Let's try to Yeah, and if anybody That's else has good. any items they want to make sure get into the report, just you can send them to me too. Okay. I haven't done it yet, but I will. Right. Uh -oh. um, other than that, do, do we have any connection with the school or want to connect with this? I know we have in the past, it looks like, you know, we used to have, a, right. who was a, Amy, the COVID changed a lot. Yeah, Amy Lanham and, uh, and a student, and right. maybe, maybe he's graduating. I'm just curious what they're doing to just, right. what, what would we want to do to just stay connected or in touch or, yeah. I don't know how that, that, that works. Oh, signed out. Who signed out? Sarah? Nope, I'm still here. Okay. Can Amazing. you hear us, Sarah? Yep, I can hear you. Yeah, because there's a big sign in front of your face that says, you oh. can sign out because you're currently signed in on another device. Oh. Nope. This is the only device I'm on. I'm touching the other. No, it have to be this. It have to be this. Oh. Let's huh. see what happens. But if I if I hit the mouse in here and go, okay, well, that does not. Oops. Okay, we can hear you and we see. Yeah. 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 Now I don't see any of you. I just see the blank C D E I J again. Oh. Can you hear oh, no. us? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Huh. Huh. Well, we'll have to ask him what to do in that case when it pops up. Yeah. Or if only we see it and it wouldn't be on the recording. Huh. Because it, it blocks out the center of the screen. Interesting. Well, anyway. Well, we are the school. Under open agenda. Are we at open agenda? That's when we're yeah. School. I just yeah. want to remind everybody that the senior center will be showing the Summer of Soul oh, on yeah. February 10th at 12 15 and i have marked down as bringing brownies mm. that was february what again 10th, 10th which is a friday at 12 15. yeah i've got that on my calendar i'm looking forward to it 12 15. 12 15. that's a good movie okay. have you seen it mark i think i did watch that yeah. yeah i know you saw it at the theater right i think wayne did have you seen it sarah no but I did notice the last time I got my weekly email from the library about what to watch on Canopy, that there's a bunch of stuff starting to come up about Martin Luther King. Black History I would like to try and find time for. Hi. So can I make sure brownies are still brownies on your to-do list? On my oh, right. I might be able to do this in my new edition. I might be moved into Ooh, the new all right. edition by then. So yay. Okay. All right. Anybody else interested in bringing something? I better pop that up so I don't get a work meeting. I'll bake something, <laughs> not chocolate. How's that? What you're doing? Are you doing chocolate brownies? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Is there any other? <laughs> I know. I don't want to. I don't want to assume that. But yeah, yes, there are brownies, right? Right. There are. Yeah. Yeah. That is the tenth. The tenth. Put that in my calendar right now. Mm. Busy, busy week. Yeah, so if you know anybody interested in coming and watching this, um, the screen is, is quite nice. It's large screen and it's a enjoy enjoyable place to see a movie. Yeah. They do it right there in the dining room. They do. They bring it around. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah, it's really, great. really nice. Yeah, I'm at work. I know it is a work day. Yeah. But.
So that's great. Glad you reminded us that that's going on. Yeah. I'm going to go down to 12 instead of 14. And I'll be there. So if you end up not being able to go, Mark, and want me to pick up brownies, you want to drop them off at my house, that's okay. Right. If I get run over by a bus, I will. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm going to put uh, two days before, so I get the ingredients mm -hmm. as my alert. I should remember that. Summer of Soul, and then the t date and brown. All caps. Yeah, well, brown what, do you have, what do you have the date? Twelve fifteen. Do you have it on the right date? It's uh, two ten. Okay, good. Yeah, that's the date. All right. Anything else under open agenda? All right, then I would move to item six, next meeting date, which we stated was the 16th of February, yes. which will be six days after the Summer of Soul event. Mm -hmm. And so we can report on that. Um, that will be seven o'clock, mm -hmm. same mm -hmm. bat station. <laughs> <laughs> This room, yeah, yeah, yeah. this room is nice. Hopefully, not sleeting, right? And with nothing else, then I would, uh, I would invite a motion to adjourn. So moved, All right? And a second, second. All in favor, mm -hmm. okay. Any Aye. opposed? You put no opposed, it's unanimous. <laughs>